this policy has never worked. The Americans tried it in the 90s. The policies which have worked let people who make mistakes collapse, let people who are competent take over the assets from the incompetence and start over. Now what's happening is the governments are taking the assets from the competent giving the assets to the incompetent and saying now you compete with the competent. Jim, this is not going to work. I mean, this is madness. The madness started in 1989 when the government set the precedent of bailing out failed institutions. Since then, it has spiraled out of control. Now our government prints trillions to bail out all sorts of private corporations. These companies used excessive leverage to recklessly speculate while paying themselves huge bonuses. Since Obama was elected president, the Federal Reserve and U.S. Treasury bailout commitments have risen from $7.4 trillion to $14.2 trillion. $3.7 trillion has already been spent. The last country to see such a dramatic increase in the money supply was Zimbabwe, under the leadership of Robert Mugabe. We have different uh, economic schools. We have the Austrian school, the school of uh, rational expectations, monetary schools and so forth. In the US we have a totally new school and it's called the Zimbabwe school and it's uh, founded by one of the great leaders of this world, Mr. Robert Mugabe, that has managed to totally impoverish his own country. And that is the monetary policy the U.S. is pursuing. If something goes wrong, print. If it doesn't get fixed, print more. In February of 2006, Robert Mugabe directed the Zimbabwe Reserve Bank to print $20.5 trillion to buy foreign currency to pay off IMF debt. This caused prices of consumer goods to go through the roof. And in May of 2006, the Zimbabwe government announced they would print an additional $60 trillion to pay for a 300% salary increase for the soldiers and policemen. In August of 2006, three zeros were chopped off the currency to form a new Zimbabwe dollar. And in June of 2007, one trillion dollars of the new currency was printed to pay for a 900 percent salary increase for the soldiers and policemen. In July of 2007, Mugabe implemented price controls which forced stores to sell goods at government ordered prices. This led the nation to complete chaos and empty store shelves. Mugabe's solution was to print more money and in February of 2008 the total Zimbabwe money supply reached eight hundred trillion dollars. By July of 2008 it cost one hundred billion dollars just to buy three eggs. In April of 2009 the Zimbabwe currency was officially declared dead and completely worthless. Zimbabweans were forced to transact in gold. If you need cooking oil you have to exchange with gold. If you need uh, milimi you have to exchange it with gold. If you need soap, you have to change your gold. Everything is gold, gold, no, no Zimbabwean dollars. Gold has been universally accepted as real money for thousands of years. Unlike fiat currencies, gold can't be printed out of thin air. Gold is expensive to mine, and its supply will always be scarce. In 1980, the last time the United States had an inflationary crisis like the one we are rapidly approaching, gold prices surged to an inflation-adjusted high of $2,300 per ounce. Federal Reserve Chairman Paul Volcker was able to get inflation under control by raising interest rates to a high of 21.5%. Back then, we were the world's largest creditor nation. Today, we are the world's largest debtor nation with a national debt of 11.4 trillion dollars. The Federal Reserve is forced to raise interest rates up to 21 and a half percent once again. Just the interest on our national debt will be over 2.4 trillion dollars per year. 
This is a death sentence for the American taxpayer. The United States may have an annual GDP of 14 trillion, but more than 70% of it is consumer spending. The only way it will be possible for the United States to pay off its debt is by monetizing it and effectively printing the money out of thin air. The national debt is not our only major problem. Unfunded liabilities for Social Security and Medicare and Medicaid are now 55 trillion dollars. Up until now the Social Security system has worked like a Ponzi scheme not unlike the one that was run by Bernie Madoff. Americans with jobs are paying into Social Security to fund those who are receiving benefits. With the retirement of the baby boomers, the Social Security House of Cards is coming to an end. Our dollar today is worth four cents compared to the dollar of 1913 when the Federal Reserve took in charge of it. If you don't deal with the dollar, there will be no retirement for anybody. We're going to have chaos. And that is why you have to cut spending. That's why we need a new foreign policy. We need to tie the people over here in this country, the people who are dependent. But we need to let the people get out, whether it's Social Security or medical care or education. The Constitution doesn't advise that we do any of that anyway. That's the only way we can solve the problem. Throughout history, the United States has had cyclical periods where paper assets like stocks are in favor and other periods when hard assets like gold perform better than stocks. The long-term battle between stocks and gold is illustrated by looking at a chart of the Dow to gold ratio, which is the price of the Dow Jones stock index divided by the price of gold. After reaching a high of 44 in 1999, the Dow to gold ratio has been in free fall to its current level of 9. If the Dow to gold ratio bottoms once again at 1 like it did in 1980, we are looking at another 90% decline in the price of stocks when priced in gold. The Dow is going to be worth one ounce of gold. That's the level. So right now gold is worth $900 an ounce and the Dow is at 12000 Those two numbers are going to meet somewhere. I don't okay. know where, but they're going to meet. Silver prices have the potential to surge by an even greater percentage than gold. The Coinage Act of 1834 established a gold to silver ratio of 16 to 1, which lasted until silver was demonetized in 1874. The gold to silver ratio is currently close to 70, which means silver is receiving almost no monetary premium. During periods of high inflation, the gold to silver ratio tends to move back to 16 as it did in 1980. Imagine if the Dow to gold ratio returns to 1 and the gold to silver ratio returns to 16 at the same time. If the Dow and gold met at the median of their current values, we'd be looking at $4,700 per ounce gold and $294 per ounce silver. That would represent a 2,000% increase in the price of silver from its current level of $14 per ounce.